Mark Honeywell also gave us the heat generator, which was a way to compete with the steam people. Because again, the steam people, they would, they would run systems up to 60 pounds in some cases and have very high temperature going to radiator. And the, the hot water people were limited to 180 degrees. So Mark Honeywell figures out a way to separate the water that's in the open expansion tank in the attic from the water that's in the system by using this device that he called the heat generator. And that's going to allow him to have 250 degree water as liquid, not as steam, in the heating system and still be open to the atmosphere. So how would you do that? How do, how do you keep the water from boiling? Well, that's where the heat generator comes in. This guy was just brilliant at what he did. Now, I found out about the heat generator uh, by mistake. I was working with a friend of mine, uh, Dave Nelson was his name. Dave's no longer with us, but uh, Dave was a good heating guy and he worked on the North Shore of Long Island and all these Gold Coast mansions that had big steam systems and gravity hot water heat. And he called me up one day and he said, uh, Dan, I'm looking at this thing called a Honeywell heat generator that's next to this boiler. We changed the boiler, but I'm not sure what to do with this. And I'm looking at it on the top. It says Honeywell number one. He says, and I know they had to start somewhere with their numbering system, but it looks like I found the granddaddy of them all. So I said, well, well hang on, Dave. Just, just wait a while. I'll come over and take a look at it. And we'll see if we could figure it out together. So I go meet him on the job. And there it is, the Honeywell heat generator piped into uh, this main hot water line that went into the side of the heat generator. And then we traced this pipe here and it went all the way up into the expansion tank, which was in the attic. And uh, Dave, uh, Dave at this point disconnects this thing and he picks it up and he's, he's shaking it. And he says, it's, it's full of something. It must be, must be full of dirt. It's, it's connected to the top of the system. The system's open to the atmosphere. There's a lot of corrosion going on here over the past hundred years. The corrosion probably settles down into this thing. It must be some kind of a dirt collector or some kind of a strainer. So while he's talking, I said, but Dave, if that's the case, why would they call it a heat generator? And as I said those words, Dave tips this thing over. And out of the side of this thing pours about a pint of pure mercury. And the mercury hits the floor and does what mercury will do once it, once it hits the floor. And Dave looks at me and I look at him. And you could have put a grapefruit in either one of our mouths. And, and it was only then that we... We go back and we find out, uh, you know, by doing a little more research, finding some more older books, what the Honeywell heat generator was. And this is what it did. So there, there's the mercury. There's a lot of mercury inside this thing. And uh, there's a pipe within the pipe. So this goes up to the expansion tank here up in the attic. This is connected to the system, but the water in the system is isolated from the water in the tank by this dip tube that goes down into the mercury. So when the water in the system begins to heat and expand, it pushes down on this mercury, the water here, pushes down on the mercury, and it causes the mercury to rise up this interior tube. So the mercury is going up and down, kind of like the diaphragm on a compression tank goes in and out as the water heats and expands. So that's how he's able to have 250 degree water at 15 PSI pressure in a liquid form and still have the system open to the atmosphere. And the safety of it was that should the pressure get too high, well, then the water would have access to this internal pipe and it would go up here and safely relieve itself to the attic expansion tank. So Honeywell now gives us a system that could work with one pipe to the radiators. It could work with much smaller radiators because his, his hot water is 250 degrees. It could work with much smaller pipes because the hotter water is going to move a lot faster without benefit of a circulator. And that's why they called it the heat generator. And upon this rock, he built his church. This was, this was a device that put Honeywell on the map nationwide, the Honeywell heat generator. When you see it on a job, it looks like that. And uh, it's a scary thing. And the only moving part in there is the mercury. So if you encounter one, just be aware of what's in there. And when Dave and I had our spill, it was at the time before mercury was declared to be carcinogenic. So we just kind of scooped it up best as we could. But I've since contacted uh, the government and, and asked them, you know, can we just dump this stuff? I mean, not the mercury, but the water that's been in contact with the mercury for all these years. Can you just drain the system? And they said, yeah, you can drain the system. It, you know, it won't absorb the mercury, but, but you have to properly dispose of the mercury. So make sure you do that because mercury is a, a dangerous substance. Don't want to leave that hanging around the house.